All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Seth Ballard is suing Brandy Manitti in the amount of $3,100. Mr. Ballard claims Mr. Manitti failed to pay for electrical contracting work that was done on the defendant's home. Mr. Manitti claims the additional work he's being billed for was just a recommendation from the plaintiff and says Mr. Ballard placed a lien on his home as a way to extort money for work he wasn't supposed to do in the first place. He's countersuing for $10,000. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You may be seated. All right, we have a claim and a counterclaim. You have a claim against the defendant for $3,100 for work that you say that he did not pay you for. There's a counterclaim that you have for $10,000. Yes. There's a mechanics lien for $3,100 against the property that you own. And what's the balance of the $10,000? Well, the, the rest of the money comes from um, legal fees. I am now not, I'm now going to be considered default on my uh, credit record possibly. So now my interest rate, if I wanted to get a new home, instead of being like 2%, might be 7 or 8% of my credit risk. Um, and then just other fines I have to pay as well. What kind of fines? Uh, well, obviously the $3,100 with a mechanic lien every time I... Right, every but that's day a I'm... big difference between $3,100 and $10,000. I'm just trying to understand. No, no, you're absolutely right, Your Honor. Every time I don't, every day I don't pay every month, they tack on more interest to everything. So. All right, so let's start. Mr. Ballard, what happened and why are you suing the defendant? Your Honor, I'm suing the defendant because, well, it's, it's simple. At first I'd like to, you know, T uh, talk about myself as a professional, you know, as, a, as an electrical contractor. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've never had any, any unhappy clients until dealing with Mr. Manitti here. So, he so had you done work for the defendant before? I have, Your Honor. And were you satisfied the first time he did work for you? Yes, Your Honor. 10 years ago, I gave him one of his first jobs after the hurricanes had hit Florida before Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. I gave Mr. Ballard one of his first jobs because mm -hmm. I believe in giving everyone a first chance. Everyone needs to start somewhere. Right. So he came up to me asking if I need to work and I said absolutely. I don't mind giving someone a chance, which is a great work. I have no Good. complaints about 10 years ago work. No problem with that. Yeah. But now we're here in court on opposite sides of the courtroom. Yes, right. And That's so right. 10 years later, you're doing work for him again. And what happened? I am, Your Honor. He's trying to sell his house and, uh, you know, at the buyer's request, they wanted an inspection done, a general inspection. So the only thing that really came out in this general inspection was a few minor uh, to severe electrical issues throughout the, throughout the house. So, minor to severe? Yes, Your Honor. There were multiple different things. That, there were four different tasks that needed to be completed All right. uh, about so the house. So four things. Your, Your Honor, yes, Your Honor. So just to, to reiterate what, he, what Mr. Ballard is saying, the house actually was sold on contingency of passing inspection, which I pointed out the four issues that were wrong. I didn't sure. hide anything. I showed up front what was wrong. I gave it to then Mr. Ballard to fix. And so everything else was already ready to go. It was a turnkey operation where it was sold as is. And me being the concerned citizen said, you know, let me just take care of the issues. So a new family that's coming in doesn't have to take care of these issues when they move in. Okay, so there were four issues. There were four yes, issues. That needed to be taken care of. We can both agree on that. Yes, yes Four Your Honor. issues. So At, be, Before the inspection, Your Honor. All right. The, uh, Before the inspection. So I know that you have to have the new homeowners want to have the house inspected. Yes. And you said, even though I'm selling this property as is, yes. that there are four things that I know need to be corrected. And which, again, I have no problem because I would not want that to happen to me. As, as in the golden rule, do unto others as unto yourself. All right. So yeah. now we have these four items. These four items, And yes. what was the cost of repairing those four items? For those four items, the way that we had the... Um, uh, inspection itself done is when I had the estimate those four items were for six hundred and fifty dollars uh, with the agreement of three hundred and twenty five down to get this started to get me you know what I needed to get the uh, the okay. work done however and the defendant paid the deposit of three twenty five 
He did, Your Honor. I actually insisted I give him half now, half later, as in good faith. And okay. I know it costs money to actually start operations, so I had no problem paying the 325 right. up front. And okay. it's one of my policies, Your Honor. All right. And so then what happens next? So I do the inspection in the house. I go around and I find all these other things, minor, minor problems. I see one you know one outlet blown out in the in the kitchen you know and then you know my um, again in the in the bathroom so i mean for me i'm i'm taking a multimeter and i'm checking you know certain outlets and i didn't check them all i'm just checking a couple here and there coming up on the verdict with judge hatchet but what i did not know at the time is that i was going to need 64 of them or 61 switches if you didn't know how could the defendant possibly know and later I saw him repeatedly kicking Ramon very hard. I, I told for him to stop. He didn't stop until I had to raise my voice. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Seth Ballard, who is suing Brandon Manitti for $3,100. The defendant paid you $325 as a deposit, yes? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Then you went along and said, We've got A, B, C, D, F, G, and maybe right, which a few is, other things. It, it, yes, John, okay. it's very important because the, you know, the GFC eyes, what it does is it kicks off the electrical circuit if it detects you know, a human touch or uh, any kind of like water, for example. Okay, so let's stop there. So you came up with a second list, not the four, but a second list of items that you said, oh, these things need to be done too. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Wait, just a second. Yes, Your Honor. What was your agreement with the defendant? What did your agreement, did you have a written agreement with the defendant? The only writing on the, um, on the estimate, Your Honor, is it's, it's noted here that, um, you know, that these are other problems that needed to be addressed, that needed to be fixed. And, you know, I, had all, I, I mentioned how much each individual piece would cost. So, like, for example, uh, if one outlet needed to be replaced, that's $20. If one GFCI um, can, um, inverter needed to be replaced, then that means $45. And in, what I didn't go over him with was how many of each one of these things we're going to need to replace. Because at the time, I didn't know. I've, I'm only checking a couple of them during the initial inspection. Wait, 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 wait. What did the agreement between the two of you say? I noted it down, and this is probably where the bit of confusion comes in. I noted it down, and when I got the signature, I told him even then, I said, okay, I'll send you uh, a, revised, um, a revised invoice at the end of all this. And, well, did you do that? I did at the end of all this, oh, and, and wait, wait, which, wait. which he, he did, signed the uh, estimate, Your but Honor. But what did he sign? What did he sign and agree that the work to be done was to encompass? Your Honor, That's I, have very the, important. I have the paper right here if you'd like to well, look at it. Well, let me see it. Your Honor, in the meantime, yes, sir. I'd like oh, to God. counter what this gentleman was saying. First of all, when we, went, when we did the walkthrough for the four items, that was it. He did not notify me of any other work done. However, he did write and write it again. I'm being truthful. He did write there could, there could be other issues. Not that he noticed while we were walking through and started testing. He did all his work after I was on vacation with my wife. So therefore, yeah. I think he pulled the old bait and switch. Oh, you only have these four things wrong? Your Honor, Let me do another 128 additional uh, fixings of a house. Your Honor, if you see the, the picture of the plug there, from my professional, my professional standpoint looking at that, okay, there's already two outlets burnt out like that, and usually that's because of, you know, polarity. That's a polarity problem where two wires are backwards, and you don't really initially see these problems right away. They surface when you don't see them coming. In my mind, this was more of a safety issue. If he's selling the house, it's, you know, really looking out for him. I've well, known this, I've no, known no, this no, man no, for... Mr. Ballard, that's not how it works. I want to see some authorization that you had authorization to do the next phase of the work. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand, Your so Honor. So where is yeah. that? It, it was verbal, Your Honor. I mean, uh, I've known a man verbal. for 10 years, you know. Again, it, this was a rehire. And, and her, wait, I've, wait, never wait. Had, I've never had a problem with wait, any wait, other... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why are we doing verbal when we have this wonderful, detailed, outline work for the $650? How all of a sudden now did we get up to $3,100 and now it's just verbal? Well, what kind verbal, of sense does that make? Your uh, Honor, it's, it was verbal in the sense that these, these are four uh, issues that I'd have to address. Now, each one of these is going to cost $20 bucks or you know, 70, 70, $47. But what I did not know at the time is that I was going to need 64 of them or 61 switches. If you didn't know, how could the defendant possibly know? He never called me until I got home a week later. Another week after my vacation, I get a bill for 
$3,100 additional. Your Honor. So there, as you can see, the old bait and switch and extortion all in the same time. Your Honor. So have you paid the six fifty? dollars No, ma'am. I only paid three twenty five dollars so far. Three twenty five. dollars yes, Which I haven't even gotten at, Your Honor. I beg your The other three twenty five, dollars Your Honor. I haven't gotten at it from the, even the orig original agreement on that All paper. right. Well, you're getting ready to get that. <laughs> Which I have no problem paying because as the work was done. However, I still need to obviously fix the other issues with mechanics lien and everything All else. All right, let's talk about the counterclaim. Yes, Your Honor. All right, first of all, Mr. Ballard, you should have taken on that extra work. It doesn't work that way. And then now to then put a mechanics lien on his home and to cost him all the fees and all of that. So I am going to grant him on his counterclaim thousand dollars. You're going to get the mechanics lien resolved. You're going to go about your business. You're not going to have to pay the three hundred and twenty five dollars. And so you net a judgment of six hundred and seventy five dollars on your counterclaim. And Mr. Ballard, this is a tough lesson. It should have been in writing before you did the second phase of the work. The plaintiff's claim is denied. Judgment, as I have outlined, in the interest of the defendant in the amount of $675, so ordered. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff has been ordered to pay $675. I should have consulted you first before starting that work. That's all right, I appreciate it. I hope you learned your lesson and take care of that lien immediately. Coming up. I saw him repeatedly kicking Ramon very hard. I, I told for him to stop. He didn't stop until...